This lesson provides an overview of IPv6. IP is the foundation of pretty much every type of computer communication today. It enables machines to talk next to each other that are on the same network. It enables machines to talk together that are on opposite sides of the planet over the public internet. But as previously mentioned, the number of addresses is limited. It is a 32-bit address, which if you remember from our calculator, if we do two to the power of 32, means we have a little over four billion addresses. That's a lot of addresses. If you consider that every device today has an IP address, a fridge, a phone, you name it, there's an IP address with it, there's actually not enough IP addresses. Now, technologies such as network address translation help greatly with this. It enables me to have an IP scheme used in my house or my company that is not routable on the public internet, i.e. it doesn't need public IP addresses. It can use IP addresses from those private schemes, the 10.172.16, the 192.168. Also, technologies like Windows Server made enhancements in IIS to be able to have multiple encrypted, so SSL protected websites that can share an IP address. But IPv6 was designed to address that shortage problem once and for all, and even add additional functionality. IPv6 was big news five years ago. You actually hear less about it today. I think with the network address translation technologies, they've found workarounds to keep IPv4 a usable technology. However, IPv6 is still rolling out in the background. There is now IPv6 on the internet in certain capacities. A lot of companies are enabling IPv6 internally. Lots of public services are now enabling IPv6. So things are still going in that direction. And really the big difference between IPv4 and IPv6 is the address. If IPv4 is a 32-bit address, an IPv6 address is 128 bits. It's written in a slightly different format with each part essentially being 16 bits. So it's written as four hexadecimal digits in each part. This means they're very, very big. Now, how many IP addresses are there? Well, if it's 128 bits, we can say two to the power of 128. That's how many IP addresses we can have. It's 340 undecillion. So three with 38 zeros after it. What that really means is we're not gonna run out of those. So the number we have available here is way beyond even what we could conceive would ever need. Basically every square foot of the earth has around 5.5 times 10 to the 15 IP addresses available. Realistically, we lose some of that IP space, the way it's divided up, but still there are so many IP addresses available with IPv6 it's really not a concern that we will run out. IPv6 is built in to Windows Vista, Windows 2008 and above. It's actually enabled by default on Windows Server 2012, Windows 7 and above. So we have the address written in this format with 16 bits in each of those sections. And then each of those four digits is a hexadecimal. The subnet mask is also written as a number of bits for the mask. So instead of having 255, 255, you just add the slash at the end, and that tells you the bits for the subnet mask. So something slash 60 tells you, well, the first 60 bits are used for the subnet mask. Just like with IPv4, there is a loopback address. It's just colon, colon, one. And colon, colon means unspecified. There is also auto-configured, and I'm going to talk more about these. Now, that's such a massive number of bits. It does make it very impractical for the most part to talk about IPv6 addresses. There's just too many. So we do try and optimize the zeros. Here we want to try and remove as much extra stuff as we can. For example, leading zeros in a block can be removed. But I do have to have at least one numerical in each block. So I could say 1080, colon 0, colon 0, colon 0, colon 8, colon 800 etc. If I have a whole sequence of zeros in consecutive blocks, I can just do a double colon. So here, instead of those three blocks that were all zero, I just do colon colon. 
I can only use that once, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't know which blocks are zeros. So I can use colon colon once within an IPv6 address to simplify remove those zeros. Remember that loopback address, colon colon one? Well, actually it's zero colon 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 one. So colon colon one is just saying well, everything else in front was a zero, so we got rid of it. So that can simplify some of the addressing. But it's still very hard to use. We're not generally going to manually use IPv6 addresses in the same way you use IPv4. There's just too many. But it is important to understand the structure that it is this 128-bit address. And we can use a double colon to remove consecutive blocks of zeros.